Okay, let's go ahead and wrap up our discussion about budgeting. Now, um, companies also will look at some non-financial performance measures, and that'll be primarily what we'll talk about now. So typically in the past, performance evaluation systems revolved almost entirely around financial performance. Now, on the other hand, current financial performance tends to reveal the results of past decisions and actions rather than indicate future performance of the company. So as a result, financial performance measures are known as lag indicators because they reveal the results of past actions and decisions. Management also needs lead indicators, which are performance measures that predict future performance. Something um, fairly new, I don't know how long it's been around, 20 years now maybe, is called the balance scorecard. And this recognizes that management should consider both financial performance measures and operational performance measures when judging the performance of a company and its segments. So these measures should be linked with the company's goals and its strategy for achieving those goals. The balance scorecard represents a major shift in corporate performance measurement. Financial indicators are no longer the sole measure of performance. They are now only one measure among a broader set of performance measures. So keeping score of operational performance measures and traditional financial performance measures gives management a balanced or comprehensive view of the organization. The balanced scorecard views the company from four different perspectives, which you can see here, each of which evaluate a specific aspect of organizational performance. So we will still include the financial perspective. We'll also look at it from a customer perspective, from an internal business perspective, and then a learning and growth perspective. So um, the financial perspective helps managers answer the question, how do we look to our shareholders? Shareholders are primarily concerned with the company's profitability, so they're going to look at items such as this. Um, especially as managers continually attempt to increase profits through increasing their revenue, by introducing new products, getting new customers, expanding into new markets, controlling their costs, minimize, seeking to minimize their costs without jeopardizing quality or long-run success, um, and eliminating costs associated with wasteful activities, and then increasing productivity, so using our existing assets as efficiently as possible. Some common um, key performance indicators for financial perspectives would be sales revenue growth, sales margin, gross margin percentage, capital turnover, ROI, return on investment, RI, residual income, and earnings per share. So the, uh, let's take a look now at the customer perspective, which helps managers evaluate the question of how do customers see us? Customer satisfaction for most companies is a top priority for long-term success, and customer satisfaction is critical for the company to achieve its financial goals. Customers are typically concerned with four product or service attributes. We're talking about price, obviously lower is better, quality, higher is better, sales service, the importance of knowledge and helpful salespeople, and then delivery time. Again, shorter will be better. So some common key performance indicators for the customer perspective would be average customer satisfaction rating, percentage of market share, increase in the number of customers, number of repeat customers, and rate of on-time deliveries. Now the internal business perspective helps managers address the question, at what business processes must we excel to satisfy customer and financial objectives? So in other words, what is it that a company needs to tend to its for its internal operations if it's going to please customers? And uh, only by pleasing customers then will they achieve their financial goals. So there's some items that will fall into this category like innovation again developing new products operations using lean operating techniques to increase efficiency and post-sale support providing excellent customer service after the sale so some key kpis or key performance indicators here might be the number of new products developed new product development time defect rate manufacturing lead time yield rates number of warranty claims received, average customer wait time, average repair time, etc. And finally, the learning and growth perspective here helps managers assess the question, can we continue to improve and create value? How much of a company's success boils down to its people? A company cannot be successful in the other perspectives if it doesn't have the right people in the right positions and a solid ethical leadership team and the information systems that employees need. So the learning and growth perspective lays the foundation needed for success in the other perspectives. 
The learning and growth perspective focuses on the following three factors, employee capabilities, um, do we have critical and creative thinkers, skilled, knowledgeable, motivated workforce? Do we have information systems capabilities, which is a system that provides timely and accurate data? And then um, the company's climate for action. So do we have a corporate culture that supports communication, teamwork, change, and employee growth? Some common employee capability KPIs might be hours of employee training, employee satisfaction, employee turnover, percentage of processes with real-time feedback, percentage of employees with access to real-time data, number of employee suggestions implemented, percentage of employees involved in problem solving or employee rating of communication and corporate culture. I mentioned um, a few minutes ago a lot about KPIs or key performance indicators. Now companies that are adopting the balanced scorecard to develop specific objectives they want to achieve within each of those four perspectives. So these objectives are going to be critical to the company's overall success. Companies use key performance indicators, which are a summary performance metrics to assess how well the company is achieving its goals. For example, the company could use an average customer satisfaction rating as a KPI to measure the company's ability to please customers. KPIs are continually measured and are reported on performance scorecard or performance dashboard. This is a report that allows managers to visually monitor and focus on managing the company's key activities and strategies as well as business risks. And finally, um, just a nod here to sustainability and performance evaluation. Uh, obviously, companies that embrace sustainability and social responsibility are going to incorporate the relevant KPIs in their performance evaluation system. Some companies will integrate sustainability-related KPIs into the four traditional balance score scorecard perspectives. Other companies even add a fifth perspective called sustainability or even a sixth one, which might be community to reflect the triple bottom line goals, planet, people, and profit. So KPIs relating to sustainability and social responsibility should be objective and measurable with both the short and long-term targets specified. A long-term outlook is especially important regarding sustainability because most operational changes related to sustainability require substantial investment in the long run that should result in cost savings in the long run. Now, the environmental performance metric also serves as a way for corporations to report their advances towards sustainability to stakeholders.